a little maybe torturous. I mean, the, the name of the book is Do With Are the Sorrow, so if it's do without the apostrophe it means to, but with it it means of them. So uh, I'm going to read the Bob Dylan. That was going to be my last poem in the book, but then what happened was my friend George was sick, and uh, all these grackles appeared, and so I took that as a sign. So I'll finish up with the uh, Bob Dylan, the girl from the North Country speaks. The North Country woods where I come from are gone. A highway passes from end to end. I'm older now, but I get along with no fires left to tend. The storms that raged were deep and wild. The snows made my season a memory. Regret became a restless child that ran in my blood and poisoned me. I wonder if he remembers how we prayed at night while the forest wept. I wonder if he thinks of me now and all his words that I have kept. I've kept my hair both long and fine. It misses his hands when I take it down. For he was once a love of mine, for he still is, though not around. And if you see him, give him this with a lock of my hair, still soft and warm. I think of him with every kiss. I think of him through every storm. Thank you. And I'll finish with George. I went, I was at George's um, funeral, or whatever you want to call it, memorial, and I started telling people about my relationship with George. And this was at a funeral, and I had everybody laughing and saying they wanted to sign me up for future funerals, which I wasn't intending to be funny. But, you know, George was a priest for a long time, and we would meet from time to time, and he liked the fact that everybody thought we were having a mad affair, you know. Um, that tickled him, and he was 20 years older than me. But, like, for example, when I turned 33, he said to me, oh, that's a really good, that's good luck. And I said, why? Well, that's a Jesus year. And I said, well, it wasn't such a good, good luck for Jesus. <laughs> and so I kept coming out with these one-liners that was just our relationship. But the truth is, is that I come in the door one day, and I, I, I said to Michael, there were all these blackbirds or grackles, and they, they descended on me like something from the movie The Birds. It was like creepy. And then every time I would go for a walk for about a month, like they would they would appear in front of me. Two or three birds would appear in front of me and they would be like trying to tell me something. And so I called George up and I said, George, because he was now in hospice, but then they kicked him out of hospice. And I said, I'm worried about you. And he said, I don't want to talk to you because you're going to cry, you know, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, he finally did die that few months later. George and Grackles for George Lombok. Uh, no one ever told me that grief felt so much like fear, C.S. Lewis. I am waiting for news, news of George's death. A dragon will get to him eventually. As I walk in silence, I know that all men, at some point in their lives, are faced with unimaginable sorrow. I do believe sorrows are wings. I do believe they are dark angels, like the blackbirds that descend on my path off these wintry trees. George has lived a long time. Our trees are filled with grackles, so many seeking to attach themselves to us. Our trees will not shield us from these sorrows. They are Emily Dickinson dashes. They stubbornly dance in the snow. They are dressed for winter, old men in sensible black shoes. They are marching. I am frightened for George. These feathered troubadours are writing litanies in the ice-filled forest leaving behind their spidery farewell letters. There are too many of them to shoo away. I leave a few behind to sip our tears. Thank you. And by the way, George lived to be, I think, 95. Mm -hmm.